Welcome to today's ILTA interview discussion entitled How to Move from White Glove Service to Self-Service. I'm your moderator, Sam Sandrowski, Technology Innovation Manager at Bowditch & Dewey. I am thrilled to be joined today by our panelist, Sherry Kappel, an evangelist at Latera. Welcome, Sherry. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for having me. This is such a great topic and very timely too. Thank you. So traditionally, law firms have operated by providing white glove service, i.e. hands-on, desk side. Mm -hmm. And other industries have been using a self-service model for a very long time. And it has many clear advantages, um, including faster service for users, fewer redundant tasks for support staff. And over time, if it's successfully implemented, it can lead to fewer requests overall. Um, so given your experience with working with multiple different law firms, where do you think the legal industry is at on the spectrum today? I feel that we're, we're disembarking toward self-service. And, and I, why I say it in that manner is that there's a tremendous amount of preparation that happens. I, I think about a, you know, a, any kind of building project, you know, if you're building a school skyscraper in Manhattan. It's, it's, it's underground that they're building for years and years and years until finally all the floors pop up. And I think that that's what's happening in legal right now. We're still working in that, in that foundation of this, the realization uh, that we want and need to do it and where can we do it. Um, so that's kind of where I think we are. are. Are there some firms though, Sam, that are ahead I think so. And I think that they've started in some pretty intriguing places. Um, for instance, one of my clients, uh, they actually went ahead and made the deployment of their Windows upgrade and of their Office 365 desktop application upgrade. They made that something that each of the users chose to do. They call it a kind of autopilot. Uh, and the idea was that, you know, IT should not enforce upon the users that, this is when they have to have their systems reimaged or rebuilt or you know updates made. They basically let the users pick that time. Oh, so wow. I know. <laughs> Part of change. I know. Um, when they first told me about it, I I was reminded of uh, Albert Einstein's quote, which I'll kind of paraphrase slightly, but it's that uh, if at first the idea does not sound absurd, there's really very little hope for it. Uh, and so basically that was how they all reacted, like, what? But it, it definitely worked. Well, that's so interesting. Uh, you mentioned that more firms are starting to look at this and definitely mm -hmm. the extreme example. Um, but why do you think firms are starting to look at this model more now? My, you know, I, I, I come from a technology company, so uh, in, in my thought process, the, the whole transition of technology to be more empowering and more enabling of the individual, much less the team of, you know, the legal teams, um, platformatization is honestly, um, you know, driving it now in many ways it's, you know, who knows which one comes first, right? The, the users wanting something more platform driven or the business wanting something more platform driven. The point is any of this technology shift that has become more of a platform, it enables us to do this. And so if you, if you think about it, you know, outside of the law firm context, if you have a question about, oh, I don't know, what's that part that I need for my washing machine? What do you do? You certainly don't pick up the phone and try to find it, right? You go online, you search, you find the part, you, you know, you do whatever. And so I feel as if also that context um, created by the ability for us to do so many things on our own, to research a topic on our own, I think that's also giving us all, call it, you know, maturity uh, to look up our own answers to problems inside the enterprise. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I do not pick up the phone to call for support <laughs> on my washing machine anymore. Um, and one of the things that you mentioned was people proactively looking things up. Um, mm -hmm. I know when a lot of people think about self-service, they just think about like submitting tickets versus calling on the phone. But for people to start proactively looking things up, there's definitely a component of training involved. How do you think training and the help desk or service desk 
should be working together, kind of which comes first, the chicken or the egg, in terms of getting people to this model. It's a team. It is such a team and a collaboration because, you know, I I think of the uh, person serving up the tickets, and I always think about how you know, they're, they're in an incident. They're a first responder to, if somebody's logged a ticket, they have an urgent need, Mm -hmm. right? And so as a result, you're, you're kind of in that very reaction mode, but you're also recognizing that on their side, on the other, the user's side, they have something that's driving them to have that urgency. And so you, 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 time is the essence there. And, um, you know, diminishing what the challenge is, is, it's an emergency of sorts. Um, Whereas the trainer has much more of, you know, creates a context of this is our learning moment, right? So if the two would work together, um, I think that we can teach versus just, you know, solve. And and I, I feel that if they do work together, then the third leg of the school stool can happen, which is in my mind, content creation. Um, Frankly, I think that it's been a bit of an absence and an acknowledgement that we need that kind of resource, but but truly none of this self-service happens without data. It isn't just metrics either, it's actual content um, that either leaps off the screen or leaps off a page or whatever the case may be, you have to have data and you have to have content. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I love the teaching versus solving. Um, It's so Mm -hmm. important to really be aware of that. Exactly. So for those firms that are ready to start making the shift, what do you think is kind of the first actionable step that they should start to take? I think that they should look at the metrics that they have gathered so far. What are those things that are not only recurring, you know, the common questions, the common challenges, the common uh, places where people get into trouble or, um, you know, just just the recurrences. What, what are those, those things? And then take those and put them into some platform. Typically, this is another platform play, right? Um, put them into some platform. Uh, for us, we put it into Uh, Pendo. Pendo is this really cool kind of tool where it creates pop-ups on your web apps and um, guides the user to the next step. And oh, by the way, if it isn't enough, it takes you off to a knowledge base article. And if that isn't enough, you can reach out to your bike love service to get more help because again, you might have something more urgent. So again, it's almost like Sam tying that, that request, that request for help, tying it back to a person as well. So you go the kind of the other direction. um, And maybe there's more to the issue than just what was solved in that little incident. But again, start with things that are recurring, the things that take both your talent, uh, a lot of time to explain, or, you know, they have to certainly explain it five times over. So that's really the place to start. Great. Thank you so much, Sherry. Uh, for your time. And we hope that everyone has a great day. Great. Thank you.